Hello and welcome to another video and on the bench today is a Vox AC30 but not as we know it so this Vox AC30 is made between 1971 and 1973 and it's what's called a Birch Stolek era Vox AC30 and the first thing you can see on this amplifier is its PC boards very early PC boards they cut the reason it's called the Birch Stolek era is for those three years that's the company that owned Vox these amps don't have a very good reputation as a rule and we're going to fire this amp up today and just see what's wrong with it it's in a bit of a state and may require a lot of work to get it fully functional again the good news is it's filled with a treasure trove of mullard tubes the sp on this is no output whatsoever it, it's dead i've got it rigged up to the variac and uh, we're going to run this up uh, in a minute but we're just going to have a bit of a look so if we look you see the gray panel on there and you've got the usual box things going on there you can see we've got the the six inputs we've got the vibrato um we've got the usual controls slightly oh, they're slightly different aren't they treble and bass and cut so this this is slightly different excuse that noise there that's the uh, tripod for the camera when i'm moving it so a slightly different layout on there yes there is don't remember having a treble and bass on the voxes i have to say you know i've not really been around a lot of vox ac30s they're great amps i just never find myself ever using one notice the reverb as well on there uh, we've got a reverb socket but we've got no reverb tank and apparently some of these had reverb on and some didn't but there's no tank on it no tank in the actual uh, cabinet either so not really sure what's going on there with that but anyway we're going to run this amp up and we're going to as we go on with it we're going to have a look and see what needs doing with it i'm just going to turn turn this over before we power it up a bit of a difficult thing to to look at ah if we look at this board as you can see I've got to be careful with that because I don't want to damage that transformer which is look, look very loose in fact what's happened to that I think that's snapped you know on there look can you see that moving I think that's snapped on the bracket there let's have a look at that um, but if we look in here we can see if we just turn this over you can see that it's uh, had a lot of topside repairs done and they, they've been done badly we've also got this and i'm presuming that the reason why this doesn't have reverb is because that was that was a socket for it and uh, the traces aren't there having said that though looking at all the uh, flux and stuff around that we should just zoom in on that you can see at one point maybe that did have some traces and they've just been destroyed by either by someone modding this and you can see i mean look at the solder in there holy moly that's really poor so someone's been in here probably the same person that's been in one or two of the other amps that i've looked at and as you can see we get a pointer as you can see we've got burnt wires going on there uh, bird poo soldering probably use another word for it but not online and then it's like we've got some information here written on there there's a preset there not sure if that's original or not we have to look at some photographs of this and there is that website vox showroom website and this amplifier is on there if you want to go and have a read up on it but if you type in Vox AC30 Birch Stolek era, it should come up. So again, some really bad soldering around these. Um, and look at that there. Are we just let me just move the camera across. Sorry, I'm a bit guilty of that sometime. 
Sometimes I move across the board and don't move the camera. Look at this here. That is. Uh, let's just see if we can get in really close. There we go. Now we can really have a look at the state of this board. You can see, excuse that noise, it's just the tripod. If we move around the board, so you can see, and it's probably go out of focus when I do that. I put that in there, so you can see that there. look at that my days this amp's going to take some sorting out really is look at the flux you, you know here look at the flux is that flux what is that it must be that is dreadful these have been just botched on whoops if we just bring that down there so you can see, you now you can really see the soldering, how bad that is. And the wire's burnt there, look. Words fail me on that. That's Beard jumping on the roof, if you heard that, by the way. That's another one of my cats, Beard. You don't see Beard very often. She's a very unpleasant lady. And if we look there... You can see the screen wire has been burnt there, look, dearie me. Yeah, it's uh, it's in real bad shape, this amplifier. Real bad shape. Right, we'll just back out with the, the zoom. There we go, and then we'll back out again. And then we'll just back out. So now you can see the, the whole amplifier. So we've not had this bottom board off yet. <laughs> don't know whether we dare look at the bottom board that is atrocious i'm going to have my hands full sorting this one out it's going to push me to the limits you know this being a pc board like it is is just going to take a long time to to get right and repair we've got these components that have been tacked on here we've got a, a a dead end trace by the look of it there we don't know whether these were added at the time that this there must have been something here because there's so much flux around these holes if that had come from the factory like that there wouldn't be any flux around it because there wouldn't be any need to be any flux around it unless they've been throwing it on with a spatula what's going on over there so here What is that? Are they, have they joined those traces together? Or is that just gunk between them? Board's damaged there too as well. See if we can get in close and have a look at that. Yeah. So you can see that. Are they joined together? Are they been joined together? Or is that just gunk in the middle? It looks like gunk. Uh, I think I'm just going to uh, clean that out before we switch this on, you know. Just to make sure... I don't know whether they've joined that or not, you know. Dear, oh dear. You can see the board's been damaged there, so it's not it's not fastened in properly. And you see the fit fitting, the screw there for that is all loose. Who dear. I don't quite know how to repair that. May need to get some kind of resin and build that back up we can't we certainly can't leave it like that can we that's not cricket right let me just tip it over and, and we'll take this bottom board off right we've got the bottom off and we can see the transformers there and there just there and you can see the board someone's got a bit uh, overzealous with the sharpie just looking at that, I have to be really careful. This thing's really awkward to get position. If you lean that over, it will bust the the pots on it. So I've got to be careful not to put the weight on the pot potentiometers. Oh yeah, 
see one or two dry joints and again let's see if we can do a, a super zoom in on this these sockets there so just go in there yeah so let's just where's my point or so if we look there we can see a dry joint there words can't describe what that is or that so they there's some considerable work needed there all that solder will have to be sucked off and uh, flux cleaned from around them and this that's that's the second one that's the third one and the fourth one there you can see yes so we're gonna that's that there that's some kind of virtual center tap because those wires there are for the filaments i do believe they're certainly the same color i'm just tracing those across oh, oh, oh dear oh dear not sure that looks like the f filaments now what value are those resistors difficult to say they, could be, they actually look quite big on the camera but they're eighth they're an eighth of a watt those are those really tiny ones obviously we've got this massively blown up something like 82 ohms with the that, is that gray i don't know something around there we'll have to put the meter on can't really make out the colors on those and i can't really see them very well we need a magnifying glass with my eyes to see those properly right let's just bring that out and we'll just go back go so we can see the whole amplifier so you can see all the mullard tubes in here all the uh the the 12x7s ecc83s um so yeah there's a treasure trove of tubes in this amp uh, unfortunately the rest of it is in a bit of a state so we're going to we're going to run this amplifier up and just see if we can get any life out of it. The first thing I'm going to do is connect a speaker. Oh, and uh, someone's put in an appearance and it's been a long time since she's put in an appearance. It's Bink. And here she is. Yes. And yes, Pink. And then we just put the camera around. Oh, th there she is. It's a long time since we've seen her in any of the videos. She's come to investigate it. And I bet we can guess what she's thinking. Can't we, Pink? Right, I'll get a speaker connected. I've, I've already connected the Variac up. And uh, obviously before we fire it up, we need to... Uh, Make sure pink's not a, around because we don't want to jumping on anything that's live. Right. Right, so we're just going to fire this up now. We've got the meter on there. You can see, put that so you can see it. And uh, I've got the Variac on it and we've got a speaker plugged into it. And we're ready to go. Right, let's see if we've got any ht so pin seven being the anode dear oh dear that's going straight to the transformer is that how they've wired them on <laughs> they're each side of the transformer dear me and we've got nothing still got nothing Actually, we're on AC, aren't we? Do Let's try again. Got nothing. Still got nothing. So we've got nothing coming in on there. What about... Um, hmm. Nothing there. Right, let's see if we've got we've got AC coming in from the mains. 
Let's see if we've got any. Can't see where the rectification is on this. I would imagine it's sort to be somewhere around here. See if we've got anything on, on any of these points. I actually just look to see if I got it plugged in there. <laughs> it's one of my numpty tricks that is. Right. Just go back to those two points there on the switch. Yes, we've got I've got some volts there. Well, that made me jump, that with my phone. Yes, we've got 33 volts going in on that switch, and I can see a slight glow on that pilot light bulb. You won't be able to see that, so that's on. So we've got we've got heater voltage there. Yes, we have. I can see that going up the pilot light. You perhaps can't see that on the camera. Or can you it no you can't because this voltage selector's in the way. So it looks like we've got filament voltage, but we don't seem to have any plate voltage. So why is that? And that would explain this this amp has come from the shop that the guy Leo I work for. He said that there's just nothing coming out of this. And I think the reason for that is that there's no HD. And I don't want to run this up too much because if there's a fault with it. Don't want to be taking out those transformers. No pink. Pink's come again. Don't you jump up here, sweetheart. Right, so no AC, no uh, DC voltage anywhere from that transformer. So now, let's just have a look at what we can see here. That's the primary side. So the secondary side is going to be on the other side. No. Primary... Yeah, because that's 250 volts AC. Let's just see if we've got anything. This thing is a pain. I've got trying to support this. It's a real pain. Yeah. So we've got voltage to this point of the transformer. Let's just have a, a look at that transformer. There's some voltage there. Yep, so we've got voltage there. So, ah, there's the secondary wires down there, look, by the look of it, and that, so, got something on there, where's the other secondary wire, there's one, that's that one. That's one of them. Aha, there's the other one. So we've 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 now know we've got voltage from the transformer, which is a relief because we know that transformer's not blown because with the filaments working and the HT not working, there's always that thing that the the windings have gone open. But we have got voltage there, so probably should have just done an impedance test on it. But seeing as we already started firing it up to check for voltage, so it looks like that. Maybe the rectifications failed on this amp, and that's why we can't get it going. Mind you, looking at some of this wiring in here, I'm not sure. <laughs> I'm not sure I want to get this going without having a good look through it. I mean, what is going on here? So we've got this wire going on here. We just have only got 58 volts on the variac. I'm just going to switch that off all together. So we've got this going on here.
going up to these two capacitors here up on the top of the board there that you can see <laughs> what is all that about if I had to edge my bets on this amplifier I would say the diodes are at the rectification is open on it the diodes whatever it's got for rectification and I can't quite see that so I can't see what's coming out of the transformers I can't see if there's a center tap because the board's so close up to it so I'm going to what what's going on there I've just spot I didn't spot that I wonder if you'd, you you like spotted that before Let me just see if we can zoom in on that. Oh, oh dear. Look at that. What's going on there? Is that a hole in there? It is. Wow. That, and yet that looks so tiny, but obviously through this camera, you can see That's a, that is a mess. I don't even know if... I don't even know if that's repairable. That's so bad. Oh dear, oh dear. And that's, there's a, a main electrolytic wire to that at the back, which you can't see. My word. I'm just gonna have a bit of a test round because I've got this camera in, right in front, so it makes it a bit awkward for me to do some testing. I'm just going to have a test round and just see if I can find any DC voltage before I drop this board. Right, I've had a bit of a test round. We seem to have... Voltage seems to have appeared again after probing around this area. So you can see there we've got voltage. We've got 19 volts, but we've got 35 on the variac, so that's telling us... Something's probably not quite right there because we'd expect to have more DC, not less than the Variac. Now if we go down to pin 9, you can see we've got 17 volts. That's the screen. These are the uh, output tubes, the L84s, 6BQ5s. We've got 17 volts there. We've got, we've got voltage on there now. And we should have voltage on there, there. So, yeah, we've got voltage on each side of the transformer. Now coming from there. So, what's, we need to keep an eye on the amp meter. So I'm just gonna turn it up a bit more. Just looking at that voltage. Is that voltage dropping? It is. So what it looks like, it's fired up for a second and now the capacitors are draining. So there's some intermittency here because when I was probing and testing... Oh, what's that? Yeah, so we've got some intermittency there on that board. My, there's no surprise, is there? Really? No surprise. Yeah, 69 volts if I press on that board. At 15 there. So I'm thinking these are the diodes. What makes me think that is if, if I put those that way, I don't get a reading. But if I turn those round, I get a reading across it. without taking this board out I might be I should be able to see if I turn it over what's what now is that a faulty diode or is that just the terrible tracks on this board so it has to be the feed to the center tap of the transformer where there's this uh, there's a, a dry joint or some some connection problem so I'm just gonna switch the camera off a minute and I'm switch the variac off and I'm just going to roll this back so I can see if I can see what's going on yeah and I was right they are diodes I thought they were the way they tested 
so we'll let and they do look a mess don't they before we go any further it is off so we're okay uh is that diode out of its i mean they have they've been lifted obviously so they're not on the board in case they burn out they don't look much of a thing do they We've got the caps here. Oh dear. Dear, oh dear. Do you think they're the original caps? 72. Made in the UK. Radio Spurs. I bet they are, you know. Amazing. They've hung on like that all those years. Floating about. All they need, needed were a bit of silicon there just to tighten those up. Right, let's just get a bit more on the Variac again. We're not good too mad. We'll just use 25 volts. Right, we'll have another try now and see if we get anything. Yeah, you see, it's, again, look, it, it's going down. So there's a fault somewhere around those diodes. Either one of those diodes is faulty or one of the tracers on here. So I think what we're going to do is... The best thing to do is just have a quick soda around those tracers and make sure those are connecting. Right, so I've just done a bit of quick soldering. Um, I think that track there was broken. See, now I've got voltage on there. Because there's the, the diodes, then it goes up to that up that trace to that next contact. And I think that's I think that's where where it was broken. We've now got voltage on the uh, on the on the plates so i'm just going to bring this up steady just keep an eye on that amp meter because the wiring in here is atrocious we don't know who's been in here well we do oh billy bodger again right i've got 86 volts now on that variac so let's just try that plate again 141 that sounds about right 142 now then let's just see what we've got on that still 142 so we've got no conductance yet but we won't have to it's just going to go up a bit more amp meter looks okay 140 milliamps we've just pipped let's go to 120 volts Hundred and ninety two now on that plate And yeah, you can see it's bit, that's the screen going down. So, 184, they're both going down. Probably won't be that great a difference be, between the screen and plate. But I tested the secondary on the output transformer, by the way, and I did get a reading. And we've got sand. Got 175 volts on the Variac. We've got 100 180. That's going up rather slowly, isn't it? That. So that would tell me. We just check that. Just watching that ammeter. It's crawling up. So I would think the capacitors in this amp are very tired, the way that's going up. Three hundred and twenty-five milliamps on the ammeter, and it really doesn't want to be much more than that. You see, that's crawling up still. Two hundred and eleven. You see that. Normally that would go straight up up there and it's still crawling up lot. So yeah. Feasibly quiet though, so you know there's no capacitance hum. Although I think that would be the least of its problems, wouldn't it? So the main objective with it, with this is is an assessment and uh, just to see if we can get this amp 
running because obviously we've got a fault found out what that was that was just the ht missing we've got a dry joint there on that board coming from the diodes up to that next trace there so we have now got this to fire up i've got 174 volts on the variac and that's as far as i'm taking this because the way that voltage crawled up there and it's still crawling it's just about settled tells me that those capacitors are very unhealthy and 342 milliamps and climbing and i think that's enough so uh, i don't think we'll push that any further hmm so let's just summarize then so we've got an, an amplifier here in extremely poor condition the the boards have been absolutely battered on this by someone that um just making sure the voltage has gone out of it and it has that uh, board is severely burnt there even though it's it's actually running and you can see the, the probe's gone straight through there so not sure how that happened the, again if we see that sort of thing we we tend to say well that's been a dead short at some point for that to be burnt like that the tubes are in incredible condition really looking at them because of course if this thing had been running hot those not on the preamp twos but the output twos which you can't see down here the the labels on them are pearly white they've usually gone brown and look all burnt if they've had too much current so i don't think the tubes have had a lot of hammer and i would have thought they're the original ones we'll have to see if there's a date on those output tubes there's a code on them to date them and i did have a look at that online and I'd almost got that code in my head and then I've lost it again because I'm not to, I don't check them often enough. So that board there is quite sick. And I'd have to seriously think, I mean, let's just make sure there's no voltage on that and we'll have the plug out. Yeah, there's no voltage. You know, is that, I've got a question how safe that is we've got that capacitor there hanging on by a thread really looking at that to get this amp right i've got my work cut out this board is really badly damaged obviously that the poor soldering there's a dry joint on there but that that's actually pin one so and there's no there's no actual trace to that so although that's dry jointed there but the, the soldering's dreadful they'd all have to be cleaned off any burnt wires this a tire here which looks like some virtual center tap that they've they've tacked on yeah the other board well that's a real poo show in it really is so some serious thoughts going to have to be given to this amplifier. So one option would be with this amplifier would be to get the boards and hand wire it again. But of course the problem with that is, is the design of this chassis where we've, we've got, we just have a look. So we, we've got this board raised up on these stanchions here and then of course we've got a cutout in there. We've also got the same thing going on here. So if we if we remove these boards before we had to put in the ha the hand wired turret boards, we'd have to um, we'd have to plate the the base of this and there. Um, so we'd have something to fasten the. Uh, the boards too and also the the uh, valve sockets the tube sockets so you know i'm just kind of going through options in my head but uh whichever way we do this amplifier it's going to be a lot of work the only consolation with this amp is as i said this is a treasure trove of mullars we've got in here so i think what i'm going to do now is at this point i'm going to wrap up this video as part one we managed to get this amp running uh, we found that fault pretty quickly we managed to get this amp going despite the state it's in it, it does run although i wouldn't want to run it for very long with those capacitors 
So we're going to go away and I'm going to have a chat with Lee, see what he wants to do with this. Look at his options. Now, there's some serious techs that, that watch my channel. Um, Gooden, one especially. So, given the state of these boards, any of you techs out there, you know, give me an honest opinion of what you think to these boards and whether you think these boards are re repairable. Because such as this, where we've got this capacitor, you can't see it at the back of here, wired to that. In all fairness, I can't really leave that like that. It just is not safe, in my opinion. What do you, you know, what do you all think? What do you text think? I don't think that's pretty safe. In the end, you know, for me to repair this amp, I'm putting my name to it. And obviously, if I'm going to do this, I'm going to do it right. But I really don't know how I'm going to repair that. So I would have to find some other way of connecting that capacitor safely on there. And then there's the top board, which is riddled with uh, God knows what components that have just... I mean, just look at the stuff that's been added on this board. I mean, if I, I've actually looked at photographs of this board and there is no components on this side of the board whatsoever. None. Yeah, on here, you can see we've got tons of stuff that's been added. You know, you can see all this stuff. I mean, what? If I if I stripped that back and took all those off, you know, what are they doing? Are they mods? Are they, are they just modded it? You know, are they just components that's that's blown on the underside, and they just wired them on the top? I don't know. I really don't know. We've got presets here. I'd have to see if those are in the original. I think that that looks factory. That preset. But these certainly aren't factory. There's a broken trace there, look, that's been badly patched up. You'll probably just see that if we hone in, maybe. Struggling with the light when we get in that close. And I just keep finding things on here. It wants a full recap. No question of that. So... I think that'll do it. I wish we could be looking at this forever more. So that'll do it for part one. Um, I'd appreciate, uh, you know, all you techs out there, I'd appreciate your opinions on this. Um, it would help me come to a, a decision on this. I have got my own thoughts on it. Um, I know this has been a bit of a strange video. Been an interesting one, though. I, I can't remember the last time I've seen a, an amplifier botched up this much. It really is. This one's got to go to the top of the list. So thanks for watching and you all take care and I'll see you all in another video. Bye bye for now.